the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So the book of Ephesians, the first three chapters really, begins to talk to us about what we have become on account of what Christ has done for us. Hallelujah. And I love the way the worship team is ministered. He said, he's seated in heavenly places. Say, I'm seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then from chapter 4, verse 17, chapter 4 verse 17 down to um, chapter 6 verse 9 from chapter 4 verse 17 to chapter 6 verse 9 talks of what we call walking the walk of a believer how that you ought to live in this system on account of what you have become in Christ hallelujah and so here we are the bible teaches us that we have been taken from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son that we have been lifted hallelujah are you following me now and then the bible tells us how we ought to walk as christians this is where the place of character development the place of living out the fullness of christ the christ life the gift the the the, the fruit of the spirit and so on and so forth so this is all covered there tells you how that you need to walk circumspectly tells you how that you need to show a portrait of a true christian and let me tell you something no matter how anointed you are if you lack character you will not last in the kingdom hallelujah are you listening to me the anointing of the spirit takes you high up there but it is character that retains you praise the lord and so i will not be talking so much about that since it has been covered hallelujah chapter 6 from verse 10 we'll take it from there today just put your finger there and then let's go to Hebrews 2 just to establish I'll be very brief tonight because we need to pray for our final year students Hebrews 2 you're there say amen. amen all right let me start from verse one therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep hallelujah the bible is saying give earnest heed to these things why because they are capable of sleeping verse two for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Verse 4. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Verse 5. This is where I want you to concentrate now. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come of which we speak. Listen to me. The Bible says God did not give any angel authority over his works. And I hope you realize that Satan, listen to me, please follow me tonight. I hope you realize that Satan was one of the fallen angels. So the Bible says no angel, whether fallen or still faithful, was ever at any time by God given authority. This is the first revelation to the fact that Satan 
is an illegal occupant in the earth, number one. Number two, Satan possesses no legitimate authority over the believer. The Bible says to none of the angels did God ever say, I have put all this in subjection. Remember Genesis 1, 26. And Elohim said, let us make man in our own image and let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air everything that creepeth and so he said for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come hallelujah let's read on but one in a certain place this is speaking of psalm 8 david now one in a certain place testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him this was the revelation that was given to the psalmist or the son of man that thou visitest him this is talking about listen it says verse verse 7 can we read together just look at the projector one to read thou hast made him a little lower than the angels stop the word angel there was an error in the translation it's not the word angels it's the word god the word elohim thou hast made him a little lower than elohim all right thou crownest him with glory and honor and this set him over what the works of your hands this is talking about man the next verse please thou has put how many things how many things thou has put all things in subjection under his feet he said for in that he put all in subjection under his feet he left how many things he left how many things you must get this revelation tonight he left nothing that is not put under him hold on now this is paul is giving us a revelation here He's saying that the Lord, when he created man, are you following me now? That to none of the angels did he give authority. So according to God's organogram, after the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the next in the spiritual hierarchy is who? Man. And then the angels. Are you listening to me now? And then after angels, we have spirit beings. Because everything in the realm of the spirit is more superior to anything in this realm. And then it ends with the world of unbelievers. And the Bible says to none, but to man, this man, Adam. Adam is not the name of Adam. Adam means man that was created. To this class of man that he created, he put how many things? All things. Let me tell you what all things mean. From the second heavens, there are three heavens. The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. The first heaven talks of your atmosphere. The second heaven talks of the realm of the spirit. Are you following me now? The Bible talks of spiritual wickedness that operate in heavenly places. The second heavens. And then the third heaven, and the Bible calls it the heaven of heavens, is where the throne of God is. The heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. So the Bible tells us that from the second heavens right unto hell, are you listening to me authority was given unto man so joshua can stand and look at the sun and say thou son stand still are you listening to me moses can look at the waters and tell it to divide he says can can we have that again please i want you to have a revelation he said for thou has put all things inanimate and and animate things all things under his feet and so the height, the apex of God's creation is man. Are you listening to me? Are you following me now? All things. This is the reason why man has the ability to tame an elephant. This is the ability why man can build bridges inside water. Are you following me now? This is why man can build the ability to conquer matter. The ability to conquer nature. He says he put all things in subjection to man. Hallelujah. That's the reason why the tsunamis and all the natural disasters are an aberration. Because there are voices that are speaking that what the Lord has said over man is not valid. Are you listening to me? He has put all things in subjection under his feet. It says, for in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing. He left nothing. That means as a Christian, 
you are absolutely in control of your circumstances and environments are you listening to me now when you did not know christ everything was allowed to happen we came from different families are you following me now with all kinds of things but when you come into this new life this is what paul is trying to explain to us that as far as god is concerned he has brought you to an experiential position where all things ought to be under your feet all things all things prosperity health blessings advancement all things but there is a mystery let's continue can we finish up that verse from but one to read come on let's read together one to read okay hold on hold on what is paul saying why is paul trying to confuse us here paul is telling us that all things have already are you listening to me the word h-a-s-t is past tense am i correct english students meaning it has already happened as far as god is concerned but paul is saying from our perspective he never said but god does not see he said but we but we now we do not see all things yet under him so what is the problem paul is showing us that there is a problem here god put creation under man yet when you look around you do not see man walking in this dominion he said we do not yet see all things next verse hallelujah but we see jesus but we see jesus who was made a little lower than angels now a prototype the bible says man was made a little lower than who elohim now he now says we also see jesus just like man a portrait a foreshadow of what he's designing for man a little lower than angels not because the word angels there is the word elohim are you following me now philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 remember the bible says let this man be in you which was also in christ jesus who although being in equality with god did not consider it a thing to be grasped but he what lowered himself this is what paul is explaining here all right so you can note there and write ephesians i mean uh, philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 11. it says for the suffering of death he said now he is crowned with what glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death the word death there is not just cessation from living are you following me now the word death there is the same word that is used darkness is the same word that is used chaos are you following me now he's saying for the sufferings of death so you can replace it that he by the grace of god should taste sickness should taste poverty should taste delay are you following me now once for every man so that on account when did he do this his substitutionary sacrifice are you following me now where he became a substitution for man so everything he went through for man in redemption we were in him by covenant fulfilling the legal claims of justice do you understand and so it says for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many what sons into what glory hold on the bible says the purpose of his death and all that he has done was to translate many sons before jesus christ died he was the only son john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son but when he died and rose again he stopped becoming the only son he became the firstborn among many brethren because he sowed himself to the earth as a seed and the bible says except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it's a spiritual principle of multiplicity now when he rose he called you sam and said i died to bring you to call many sons into glory hallelujah are you following me now so you can connect this now with first peter chapter 1 verse 3 it says according as his divine power hath given us how many things you now see it all things that pertains unto what am i connecting something for you it says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness there is a bot there now it says through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue verse 4 says wherefore has he given us these exceedingly great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature 
having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. So, the purpose of Jesus' death is not just to come and take us to heaven alone. No. If that was it, you would have just flown to heaven the moment you died. Are you listening to me? There is a glory that he had. Man had this glory and it was lost. So Jesus went and paid the price. Listen to me. Because the eternal counsel of God, listening to, listen to me, as far as our church age is concerned, the eternal counsel of God is that all things, Colossians 1, Ephesians 1, the eternal counsel of God is that all things be headed up in the Christ. That he truly becomes the head of the church, the body. Are you listening to me? And so the way this will happen is that Christ, Jesus, will submit to the authority of the Father. Are you listening to me? And by the agency of the Spirit, the church, the body of Christ, will come under subjection to Christ. And by authority, we will enforce his dominion until cosmos comes under authority of man. At that point, Christ becomes King of kings and Lord of lords. Then an end will come to our age. We will begin another age. Are you following me now? And so, his goal was to bring many sons into glory. What is glory? It's from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the, the presence, the true nature, the character, the fullness of all that a man is and all that he represents. So when the Bible says that he is bringing many sons into glory, many sons into his character of, of love, his character of grace, his character of power, his character of prosperity, his character of divine health, his character of wisdom, his character of leadership. Hallelujah. So when you give your life to Christ, it's not just for you to be born again and say, okay, well, yeah. You need to realize that there was an intention in the heart of the Father. When he came to save you, the day Femi came to give his life to Christ and you stood here, listen to me. While the Holy Ghost was convicting you, there was an intention. Your coming out to get born again was only a means to an end, not the end in itself. Are you listening to me? That's why when you get born again, it's only... The beginning of your journey, not the end. And so you begin an experiential walk through the ministry of the word and the spirit. He begins to train you. Listen, can I tell you something? The ultimate purpose of God is to bring you into that realm of glory. So he starts teaching you how he behaves. He tells you now in the kingdom, speak like me. You see the basics, talk like me. He's teaching you. Talk like me. Speak like me. Walk like me. Soon you find out, Lord, I'm becoming like you. He says, that's the goal. I just started giving you beats. Talk like me. Speak like me. Suddenly you talk and you see that things begin to change. Learn to love like me. Learn to give like me. The moment you begin to obey these little instructions, the ultimate goal is not just to make you a talkative. It's to make you become a replica of his glory. Are you listening to me? bringing many sons into glory now but watch this this is god's original intention and if satan is an enemy of of the lord and the enemy of the church what do you think his agenda is then to be able to stop are you listening to me to try to stop the reality of the believer coming into this position where you know and understand are you listening to me that God's desire for you is to rise to that position of glory. He said, know ye not that ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Psalms 82 from verse 5, he said, they know not, neither do they understand. They grope in darkness and so the earth is out of course. He said, have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Say, I'm not ordinary. Say it, I'm not ordinary. You see, the problem is, many of you just say it because you are doing it in church. Are you listening to me? This is not about bragging. This is not about pride. This is the position that God has brought you by grace. 
And so you have authority over sickness. You have authority over everything. Are you listening to me? You have authority over the atmosphere. You have authority when you go to your families. You are not an ordinary person. So you cannot, it doesn't matter what your village is and where you come from. You realize that you have been separated. And now the Bible says when we were without Christ, separated from the commonwealth of Israel. But by grace he has called us out of every tribe. When you get born again, it's not the issue of where you are coming from. It's your new life in Christ. Hallelujah. In bringing many sons into glory. But we do not yet see all things. Why? Because there is a devil out there who will never watch you step into that reality. Are you following me now? And this is the foundation of our teaching. Ephesians. Lord grant us insight tonight. The goal of this meeting is not just to make you spiritually educated. It's to make you powerful. If the church does not walk in dominion, there is trouble in our generation. Mm. Verse 12. Ephesians 6 verse 12. Are you there? Say amen. Alright. For we wrestle... Not against the word wrestle there is the word contend. For we contend not against flesh and blood. Look up please. In other words, please follow me. We are going to be, I will be touching and be balancing many things about the concept of warfare, deliverance, Satan. Are you listening to me very quickly? Watch this. Because I, I will need to balance a lot of teachings that many of us have received that have misguided us and have stopped us from coming into the place of kingdom authority. Now in the Bible, we have established the fact that God's desire is that many sons be, be born into what? Glory. Is that correct? Do you believe that? To raise you to a position where you live and reign and legislate on behalf of heaven and the earth. And now the Bible tells us we contend not. That means there are adversaries. Are you listening to me? There are all kinds of resistances coming from Satan. Watch this. I hope you realize that there is a law in this earth realm that whatever does not have a body cannot function in this realm. Is that correct? This is why the Bible says the church is called what? The body of Christ. The church is the body that the Godhead uses. So if God wants to heal, he finds a body. That can cooperate with him and be his hands here on the earth. Are you listening to me? Now, Satan does not have a physical body. Demons do not have physical bodies. Are you listening to me? So it makes it impossible for them to freely flow in our midst. So they search for human agents. The Bible says we wrestle not against what? That means the issue is not your grandmother in your village. Are you listening to me? All these kind of deliverance things that people come. Now God is, there is a deliverance going on now. This is the real deliverance happening now. Are you listening to me? He sent forth his word. And his word he led them and delivered them. Because there are many of us right now who have been misguided. You are sleeping in the night. Suddenly you see your mother or your father appear to you. And then you go to one false prophet. Like the guy who prophesied to that lady that she was going to die. That's a false prophet. Let me tell you something. A true prophet does not just reveal catastrophe. He stops it. If he's truly a prophet, there is authority to stop it. All these prophets that only reveal problem. There is something. Stop it. If you are not, you are not an ambassador. Go and sit down. Are you listening to me? So, now you come and meet me. Sam comes to meet me and says things are not working. And then the man is praying. Watch this. This is a lot of them have not come into a place of maturity. While you are praying, then I see Sam's grandmother doing incantations. The next thing I say, ah, Sam, your grandmother. And then I say to your grandmother and you. And I say, Sam, what am I seeing? I'm even seeing your sister. It may not be a lie. Even if they are witches and wizards, the Bible says what? We wrestle not against what? That means it is vain. It's vain just to look at this person and say, Grandmother, just die. Don't you know that spirits don't die? They will move from one place and look for another entity. Your problem has not been solved. 
Are you following me now? There's all kinds of bitterness and anger in the body of Christ because everybody is blaming everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody is calling everybody a witch and a wizard and whatever. No, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There are three levels of Satan's manifestations in the life of people. One is called possession, acute possession. That one is in control of your spirit. You are aware. That's the realm of witches and wizards and all of this. The second one is called influence, manipulation and control. That one is you are not possessed. But because of your mind, the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are what? Are not carnal, but mighty through God. Are you listening to me? To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. They are in the realm of the mind. It's a casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. It's a bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. So demons can manipulate people. Demons can manipulate preachers. Demons can manipulate tongue-talking believers. Are you listening to me? When you are born again, it's true that you cannot be possessed. But you can be manipulated greatly. Error is a type of demonic manipulation. Hallelujah. So every time the concept of what we call spiritual warfare, right, please, right. I need to define spiritual warfare right now. Spiritual warfare is not in terms of the word war, dear, please listen. The word war, dear, look up, please look up. Because this is our idea of war. Are you listening to me? So you are a warrior. We even act it in many ministries. They say, now assume your position, and then you assume. And now you imagine in your mind, Satan, are you ready? And then you move back, give him one punch, then he gives you another one. Then finally, after so much travail, they beat you like you entered a meat machine, then you come out like more than a conqueror. No, no, that is error. Are you listening to me? That's why we began to teach. Listen, every time you approach the realm of darkness, you approach from the position of Christ's finished work. The Bible says all things have already been conquered. You are not trying to conquer Satan. You are trying to enforce the victory. Are you listening to me? That's what we call the fight of faith. It's not the fight of sight or the fight of senses. Let me tell you what the Bible defines as real spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the operation of the word and the spirit together to establish the victory. That Christ has wrought. Say amen. If you are finding it hard to say amen, this is a sign that this meeting is for you this night. Because many of us don't like it. Say, ah, this thing. They give you an idea that you're a military man. Yes, you are. But listen, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are not man made, they are mighty through God. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting blessed tonight? All right. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Against, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Then against spiritual wickedness. These ones do not reign in this earth realm. They operate from the realms of the second heavens. Remember in the book of Daniel, the Bible says when Daniel set himself to pray. Are you following me now? When Gabriel was bringing in the prayer because he's the archangel in charge of service. The Bible says that spiritual wickedness across the territory of Persia, the prince of Persia intercepted. And because it's not in Gabriel's office to fight, it's the angels that fight. Hallelujah. The Bible says the angels confirms, they perform. The words of God's messengers. And so when, when, when you stand as a believer, the first understanding is that you are approaching Satan not in your strength 
as a representative many of us listen every time i stand to minister to the sick every time i minister to devils i don't stand as myself i say oh man of god you have an apostolic demons don't even know who is called an apostle they only know jesus are you listening to me they can call you an apostle or a prophet or whatever demons don't know those things all they know is jesus and any ambassador that truly carries the badge of his of jesus christ so rea you realize that you are high you are seated up there every time you stand and look at satan don't be surprised now this is where i will balance it because many preachers have taught that every time challenges come or if you are truly manifesting faith listen to me if you are truly manifesting faith then when challenges come and the rest is it's a sign that you are backsliding that is another kind of error are you listening to me say amen, amen. thank you jesus So what is the warfare of a believer? How do you stand against the wiles of the enemy? Because that's what Ephesians is teaching us in verse 6. Verse 13. On account of the fact that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, wherefore, take unto you the whole what? The whole what? Now let me. You will tell me whether knife and bow and arrow and so on and so forth was mentioned. There are people with all kinds of revelations that we teach in church and we build up a crippled body that you may be able to what did he say fight you may be able to what what does it mean to withstand to resist to refuse the victory over something it says stand everybody says stand stand yes stand therefore having your loins girded about with what is showing you the weapons that you use to fight the good fight of faith number one is what truth and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall do what set you free so every time there is bondage what do you need what do you need please truth revelation so every time there is bondage and you are praying in the spirit and say lord i sense bondage in our family there is bondage what is the revelation you need it's not the issue of killing your grandmother. You need light. You need light. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. It says, and having the breastplate of what? The breastplate of what? I had a man of God say it so beautiful. And I'm going to say it. He said, why did he say breastplate? Because that's the one that covers your heart remember righteousness is the ability to stand before the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and guilt every time righteousness shifts you are vulnerable because satan begins to use your past satan begins to use all kinds of things are you following me now so satan comes and tells you about the things you did yesterday and then you use truth First, you stand and declare, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not because of what I have done. It's what Christ has done. I am walking in the victory that Christ has given me. Mm. That's what the Bible calls the fight of faith. That's how believers are to stand. So Ephesians teaches us who we are in Christ. To know your identity. Then it tells you how to live and manifest the Christ-like character. No bribery. No corruption. No sleeping around. No malpractice. Say amen. Don't look at me. Then it teaches you how to stand. Shows you who you are in heaven. Teaches you how to operate in the earth. And then teaches you how to conquer the powers of hell. It says stand therefore. Having your loins girded about with truth. And having the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the gospel of what? The gospel of what? There is a gospel called the gospel of peace. One of the manifestations of the spirit of Satan is trouble. There are many of you that trouble is a byproduct of violating many laws of God. The, gospel, the word peace there is not just calmness. Are you listening to me? The gospel of shalom. The word shalom there is the word prosperity. Hallelujah. 
There is trouble if you are poor, true or false. There is trouble if you are sick, true or false. He said there is a gospel. There is a gospel. He says let your feet, what do you do with your feet? You walk. That means let this perpetually be your mindset. Walk with this. With the gospel that God wants to prosper you. With the gospel that God wants you to live in health. Are you following me now? With the gospel of shalom. Not just peace and quietness. Above all, taking the what? Shield of faith. The shield of faith. Wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Taking the shield of faith. Now watch this. The shield, what do you do with the shield? You stop attacks. Are you listening to me? Faith comes by what? But the manifestation of faith does not come by hearing. It comes by speaking. Faith enters you when you hear. But is released from you when you speak. Are you listening to me? And so you, you hear the word. Not newspapers. Not chase magazines. Faith comes when you hear the word. So as I'm listening to tapes. As I'm building myself. As I'm studying Christian books. I'm hearing the voice of the spirit through those pages. And my faith is built. And what happens? I hold a sheet of faith. So when Satan looks at you. When you go to your CGPA. And you see all kinds of carryover. Satan says that is it. No. You lift a shield of faith. Quickly. I am what the Bible says I am. I am full of the word. They send you a report from home. They say, guess what? Something is happening. The landlord is coming to kick people. Take on the shield of faith. This is what the Bible calls the warfare of the believer. Not to say the last money that came, where did it? Mm. Take the shield of faith. I refuse to be offended. Your friend is calling you something. You take the shield of faith. And the helmet of what? The helmet of what? Of salvation. Where are we? The helmet of salvation. Look up, please. Why did he call it a helmet? Why did he say the hand gloves of salvation? Why did he call it the helmet of salvation? Because you cover your head. Salvation is the foundation on which everything starts. This one is salvation as being born again. Are you listening to me? That's what the Bible calls assurance of salvation. There are many of us who are saved, but you are not sure if you are saved. This is why we took our time to teach you a lot of things. Many of you are truly saved. But when you go to certain evangelistic meetings, by the time they finish, you, you now say, to, am I saved or not? You say, just go out if you are not sure. Please don't, don't disturb me. There are many of you, every altar call, every single altar call to be born again, you are coming out. Now, I'm not, I'm, there's nothing wrong. If it's an altar call to pray in partition and all of this, but if it's an altar call to give your life to Christ, can I surprise you? There is only one sin an unbeliever has. That's the sin of not confessing Jesus as Lord. Hmm. An unbeliever has only one sin. It doesn't matter what he has done. He is lost anyway. The only sin that takes an unbeliever to hell is not confessing Jesus as Lord. All right, let's, let's talk of something else. Are you listening to me? The helmet of salvation. And what? The sword. Come on. The sword of the spirit. Which is what? Which is what? The word of God. The sword of the spirit. So every time Satan brings his fiery dart, what do you use? Let's look at the life of Jesus, our high priest and our pattern man. The Bible makes us to understand that Satan comes to meet him after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Watch this. Every time Satan comes to a man, Satan comes to meet Sam and says, Sam, did God really say you are the HOD of worship team? Watch this. Satan will always try to to let you do sensual things to validate what God has already said. I mean, he just came out of the waters and there was a voice. This is my beloved son. Am I right? Now Satan is telling him if you are really the son of God. That's why Satan will tell you if you are really beautiful, sleep with that guy. If you are really intelligent, you better do whatever you can do to get five points. 
many of us are putting ourselves under needless pressure trying to prove what the word of God already says we are are you listening to me so he's told him if you are truly the son of God turn what stones into bread Jesus would have said all right I will not only stone turn stones into bread you will see butter on it to let you know I'm the most high not just the son of God that's what many of us would have done. said that's an easy thing come on blue band I call you from the leaves in the tree but he said it's not necessary it is it is it is that's see this is how to fight Satan no he cannot stand it is written watch this do you know Satan even used it is written against Jesus? In the realm of the spirit is an interchange of words. The higher words prevail. So demons sit down. Witches and whatever. What do they use? They don't bring Cain and flog you. They use it is written. In their ordinance, the Bible says, blotting out every ordinance. is something that was written. Even the judgment upon the kings psalms 149 is called the written judgment the world is a legal place friends are you listening to me so he said it is written and then satan takes him watch this and he tells him he showed him the kingdoms of all this world and said if you bow to me i will give you because until jesus died satan was the legal holder of the keys where did he get it from adam that's why Jesus didn't say, are you joking? It's my kingdom. He knew he could do it. And he said what? He refused. Satan takes him to a tower and says, can you just fall down? For it is written. He shall put his angels charge. Come on, Satan. Satan is studying the Bible. You are not studying it. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? So he comes. And begins to attack you he tries to find everywhere the bible look at all the places you are to protect the breastplate of righteousness helmet of salvation the gospel of peace hallelujah you are holding in your hands the sword of the spirit and then on your arm there is a shield of faith there's nothing to cover your back because you are not supposed to give up you are not supposed to retreat the prophecy has been made that you are a winner so there was nothing designed to cover your back. The Bible says he who turn, if you turn in the day of battle, your strength is small. Hallelujah. Now, practicals. Satan begins to throw all kinds of fiery darts. Watch this, the operation of Satan. He begins to use the word of God. Sam, you will not be born again you will not be this your salvation is not true suddenly you begin to feel pains around your body and truly truly physically speaking there are pains suddenly you go to your bank account there is nothing there you go to the board what happened the results are not doing well everything you lay your hands to do everything and it's not working and then satan tells you now using the evidences you see around you can you truly say god is faithful and then the, the man who has now become sense driven says lord okay but let's look at this thing critically now that's where the bible says abraham considered not the moment satan reduced you from a spiritual person to a scientist you are in trouble because he begins to give you facts he said let's examine this critically you just prayed the miracle service you just had that the only money that your father had has disappeared watch this now you know who you are in christ meaning his victory is your victory you already know the end by prophecy he told his son timothy he said war a good warfare with the prophecy god gives you prophecy so that you can know what the end will be then by the manifestation of the principles of the kingdom you begin to walk into that reality hallelujah so i get up in the morning and I say, Satan, it doesn't matter what you are bringing. I believe what the Bible says. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm hearing reports while I look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Because the things that are unseen are permanent. The things that are seen are temporal. Hallelujah. Satan uses human agents. 
when they look at you and say you will not become anything in life you say though my beginning is small my latter end shall fire yes my village may not be in the map of nigeria but i know that the blood of jesus was shed for me i am wonderfully and fearfully made i am precious sickness is hitting you down if that same spirit come on now that raised christ you are sending words in the spirit you are saying i'm a good soldier i'm not weak the moment you speak god tells the angels are you not hearing have i not written that i am alert and active watching over my word every time you speak you put pressure on god to protect his integrity so i refuse to be silent i refuse to be silent i refuse to be silent and you begin to speak words of faith in the name of the lord jesus that terminal disease over my father will not take him in the name of the lord jesus i believe i believe i believe he that must come unto god must believe it looks like you are stupid but when the result comes let me tell you something friends god is not joking with you Many of you are already afraid now. Where will my school fees come from? And Satan is telling you, all right, the proposal your uncle made for you, are you ready to consider it? He's saying, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. Come on, the sword of the spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. An unbeliever comes to ask you out. Use the weapon of God's word. What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? There is a decision and you need to say no. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Teaching us to say no. There is grace. Let me tell you something. It may take a while. And this is where the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience. One of the most frustrating things is that you are speaking God's word. And pressing and results are not coming. But you know what? There are many of us that you get to that edge suddenly you give up there's a song that says i was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it are you listening to me many of us when you are at the end of the road where your blessing the bible says, if the cloud be full of rain the man you call father abraham for 25 years god spoke when some people were celebrating the silver jubilee of their children, he was still waiting. He said, God told me. The man we call Noah, God told him rain will come. Let me tell you how long they built the ark. 100 years. How long have you waited on God? That you are yelling at him and you, 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 you will not. Many of us are talking, but what we are speaking, we are sowing demonic terrible seeds. Are you listening to me? So every time I pray, I take the word of God. I say, Lord, I know you are faithful. In the name of Jesus, I know you are faithful. You may be crying. There's nothing wrong. Still cry. But say, Lord, my tears will not stop me from speaking. You're sleeping and you're tired and you're weary. You want to pray. You say, there's no result. I've been praying. There's no marriage. Can you stand? Ah. Isaiah 34, seek out of the book of the Lord and read. None of these words shall fail. None shall want her maid. Lord, I thank you. You designed me for a man somewhere. And I thank you. You are called the father of spirits. Rather than warning God and saying, Lord, I'm giving you the last chance. I will backslide. You will go to hell. Are you listening to me? Say, I will stand. Say, I will stand. See, final year students, listen to what I'm saying very well. This message is important. Because many people graduate with all kinds of excitement. And then you meet a rude shock in life. Suddenly you find out that it's not the way Nigerian film has told you. They just wrote three years later. They showed the guy with one big house and everything. And in your mind, because you fed yourself with all kinds of things. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. I'm not saying God cannot bless people. But I'm saying believers must be taught that patience is an aspect of faith. 
Because when God wants to give you 20 million next week, Satan will say, take 2 million now. And that's how many people out of all this get rich rubbish. Many people have gotten themselves, they've pierced themselves with sorrow. The things of God may be gradual, but it's sure. We have a sure word. Are you following me now? Whatever God cannot give me, I cannot get it. Whatever God cannot give me, I don't even want it. Because it is only the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. Every other blessing comes with a measure of sorrow. Anything that will take me to hell, I don't want it. Are you listening to me? So you must learn to stand. Every time you are praying, it's not the issue of people to say, Lord, I know that if you kill, if you kill my, my, my sister, the moment you kill my sister, I know the door will open. Lord, I squeeze her spirit, I put it in a bottle, I close it, all this kind of demonic prayer. Many of us even do prophetic things. Yes! You go to the houses of prophets, they say bring the pictures of all the people. They put it in a bottle, close it, and shake different things. Smoke is coming out, and then you feel it's working. Because we walk, see the Bible says we walk by faith, and not by sight. Satan walks by sight, and not by faith. Hallelujah. So as a believer, you will pray. Every time when we talk to people about praying, praying, it's not just the issue of comfort. Are you listening to me? Every time you pray, you afford yourself the opportunity to send words into your future. You are prophesying. What you see in my life is not what I'm praying about today. It's the result of what I prayed about yesterday. Tomorrow you will see what I'm speaking today. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, you are speaking with your one sandals. The blessing of the Lord is upon my life. I will be a blessing to generations. And while you are saying it, you are drinking Gary with no sugar. Don't worry. Be happy because you will not have the opportunity to see that again. I saw one picture that we snapped when we were at the cafeteria. You remember? We sat down like prisoners, all of us. I was with my jacket. Jimmy was here. Jax, all of us, we just sat down. We were laughing. But while we were laughing, we were speaking. Come on. This is the difference between you and the person in the class. You are listening to the same lecture, but you are not going to the same place. There is an ability. You are in your office. Everybody is receiving monthly salary, but there's an extra grace. You are tithing. You are giving. You are stopping the devourer. I'll never be a failure in life. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'll never be. I've found the keys. I've found the keys. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I believe the word of God. I'm not just preaching it. I believe. That's why when people are making a boast of what they have become, I can't join them because I know how I got there. Hallelujah. So you are not ordinary. You see, the goal of this thing, many of us feel very excited now. But every time, have you been speaking about the things that are troubling you? Don't allow Satan to just ride through your life. Don't use wrong words. No, every time you use wrong words, you may feel psychologically comforted, but you have tortured yourself again. Thank God for not killing your enemies because you will be the first person to drop down and die. So I have the spirit of faith. I lift up the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. You're on your job and somebody is frustrating you. None of your business with the person. Just pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Don't, say, don't tell God what Satan is doing. Tell him what his word says he will do. Many of us go to pray and you spend hours telling God what Satan is doing. That's not what he said you should do. He said, as I hear you speak, it's not just speaking your words. Ezekiel 37 verse 7, I prophesied as I was commanded. And then there was a sound. He says, oh bones, hear ye the word of who? The Lord. There's no other word that is valid in the realm of the spirit. Not even your own words. It is the words of God. Are you listening to me? I choose to believe God's word. See, this is a training. This is a training.
you're on your job, you enter your office and you lay your hands in the name of Jesus. This is the day that who made? Who made? I do not read in my Bible that Satan helped God to make any day. This is the day that the Lord who happens to be my father has made. It didn't say has created. It said has made. Meaning it was designed. It was crafted. When God was making my day, he said, uh, how will Josh's life be tomorrow? It will be best for him to walk sick, free, blessed, prosperous. And then he created it. But Satan will step into that day and say, no, it will not be like that. And then he say, okay, to our Lord, you see what? No, you stand and say, I, I have found it. My Bible is a mirror. My Bible is a door. My Bible is a picture. It lets me know what God has said. And I take that word, I put it in my spirit. And I'm not going to let any devil stop me. I will speak the word of God. As you take your time praying in the spirit. As you pray in the spirit, you are building capacity. You know why? So that your strength will not be small. That's why we pray in tongues. There are many of us, our strength is small. Every little challenge will just fall back. Though he slay me, Job said, yet will I praise him. Are you listening to me? Final year students, many of you are already afraid. Calling all kinds of uncles and aunties. And saying, what of uh, uh, uncles sir? The other issue we spoke about when I was in 200 level. Oh, if God be for me. If God be for me. If my God be for me, if God be for me, if God be for me, I need not pledge allegiance to any man under the sun. If God be for me, if God, he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes. Lift up your eyes for your school fees. Lift up your eyes for your job. The Bible says you will occupy houses you did not build. That's what my, you may not believe it, but I believe it. And I will walk in it. I walk in the favor of the Lord. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare us a table before me not in the absence in the presence of my enemies so as a final year student you walk out and say hallelujah a graduate is out with the anointing of the holy ghost not just a certificate from abu i have an anointing the esther anointing is upon me the favor anointing is upon me every door that is closed must open i begin to speak so you finish your exams and while other people are popping beer I'm behaving foolishly. Look at their lives after 10 years. You will regret it. You will know the consequences of not speaking. You take one or two weeks back. What are you doing? You are just speaking. I say, no, I need to build something. The only thing that is permitted to enter your future, there are words. Hallelujah. If I were you, I would take five days. I will dedicate every day to speak on several aspects of my life. Today is finances. I will sit down and search through scriptures. Let me tell you something, friends. This thing works. Are you listening to me? It works. And I believe the word of the Lord. And you begin to speak. You begin to prophesy. You begin to declare. And you say, Lord, I have no man. Maybe your father is late. Maybe your mother is late. And everybody's running away from you. Cheer up. Cheer up. You are an ambassador. Say it. Say it again. If there is anything I want you to take out of Koinonia final year students. Some of you, we may not see you again. Maybe forever. But I want you to know that while you were staying in Zaria. That a central message in your spirit that you are an ambassador. I tell you, many of you, after many years, you will sleep and you will hear these messages. You will remember that there was somebody shouting at the top of his voice. Whenever life presses you down, suddenly you will hear it in your spirit. The Bible says you shall hear a voice. It didn't say the voice of the Holy Ghost. You shall hear a voice. The voice of the Spirit. The voice of ambassadors. The voice of faithful men. You will hear these messages again. You are an ambassador. Arise, sons of glory. Arise, Generals, arise, sons of glory. 
when they say they are bribing in the office you say no no nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart you say no i'm not a corrupt nigerian you become a minister no way no way no corruption i hope you are not just jumping because some of the people who are doing what is spoiling this nation they were in church they had this message that I'm, I'm teaching to you but they did not mix it with faith i tell you there is a generation rising are you hearing me there is a generation rising we are not the wasted generation i see it i see the breaking of a brand new day i see the breaking of a brand new day steve can you help me i see the breaking of a brand new day listen i will not organize dinner for you final year it is we are going to launch you here with an anointing are you listening to me we will launch you with an anointing that's why we told you tonight is your night listen tonight is the i want you to open up your spirit that's what we did for the final year students that's what we always do it's wonderful to organize dinner and dress and do this wonderful but you have eaten enough it's time to receive something hear me let me tell you words have prophetic implication it will follow you after decades in your life hallelujah isaac looked at his son esau and blessed him did he give him money what did he give him and the bible tells us that a few years later esau came with cattle he came with servants where did he get them from that's what will follow you so that after five years we see you coming with companies and ministries and corporations and children the recession notwithstanding none of your business with the recession you are an ambassador you belong to a class of royalty i'm telling you this when you graduate people will laugh at you they'll tell you what i'm saying does not make sense but the generation that will survive the times that are coming will be men of the world if the world cannot do it then we are hopeless but thank god for the power of the world it created the heavens and the earth the bible says through faith we understand that the world that my future that my life that my finances is framed by the word final year students all of you i want you to jump up gloriously all final year students hallelujah hallelujah now i want to invite all final year students i hope we can have this Okay, not this side because of the elders. Please just dress here a little bit. All of you jump out here and come and line up quickly. Please do it quickly. Yahweh. Yahweh.
you should have no fear of what tomorrow brings i'm prophesying to you you need to praise his name and you have no fear of what tomorrow look at me not fear of marriage not fear of job how can you fail listen an unbeliever who is not praying he's not hearing any word is jumping and busting champagne and you a believer that is royalty i don't care how many people in your family have not become successes there is an anointing that will come upon you it will set you on high i tell you those of you out can you pray in the spirit for one minute pray in the spirit you have been taught you know the power of prayer come on pray in the name of jesus powerful we are releasing you as an infant of fire i tell you you will change you will shape history you will shape history i am confident the word of god is strong in you the word of god is strong in you the word of god is strong in you Yes, students, listen to me. Hallelujah. Listen, please listen. I'm talking to you with all my heart. You have had teachings on faith. True or false? True or false? You have had teachings on the grace of God. You have had teachings on the fear of the Lord. You have had teachings on character. The Bible says he gave unto some apostles, prophets, by the ministry of the servants of God for years, some of you, you have been built in the word of God. I assure you, that word will keep you. Are you listening to me? Look at me. Now you know success is not a mistake. True or false? Who is still trying to learn? Now you know that there is an operation of the word of God in you. Now you know that you don't just have a certificate. You have an anointing. That you are being raised up with Christ. This is not about man of God. This is not about woman of God. You will go and meet your colleagues who have spent their days in the university just reading and living for Satan. Refuse to mix up with them. You may be a fanatic, but I tell you, if you are ashamed of the word of God, you will be a failure in life. He said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Our fathers, the holy men of faith, kept this word and they used it to change history are you listening to me great men received inventions from this word great men had model families from this word we have taught you things about family life we have taught you things about about the principles of god relationship money kingdom economics you have no excuse to fail in life through tears we have labored in the word and in prayer for you to build you let me tell you something i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified keep the principles you have had some of you you may not see any results yet but i want to pray for you hallelujah i want to pray for you i want to pray that god will put a blessing upon your life listen listen it would take you from your village to shake the nations i tell you this and there is an anointing that can pick a man i have found my servant david and with my holy oil from the wilderness to Saul's throne from the wilderness there is an anointing that took esther from her hamlet not known by anyone you may be lost in this crowd right now for some of you 
you will be great apostles for some of you you will be men and women of god bishops many of you will be the next amphimac fashions many of you will be the next business moguls i'm not motivating you but you must keep the word of god listen to me many graduates come out with excitement after six months what they call faith six months earlier now becomes foolishness because of the reality of what is happening look at the mess and the nonsense that is going on in abuja when you preach to many people in abuja what i'm preaching to you some of you live there they'll just laugh and say forget jare leave all those your childishness let's face what reality tell them my bible says i am the truth and i am reality 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 is everything that is in the word of god you will not beg for food ladies no barrenness no that subject is gone forever i don't care what your past is that's why we are settling it here are you ready we are going to pray for you and bless you and pray that the grace of god will come upon you deuteronomy i first want to bless you with the blessings that the jews used to bless their people with thank you lord jesus deuteronomy 28 i just want you to shout amen hallelujah thank you jesus in the name that is above all names father i pray that as i pronounce these blessings upon your sons and daughters let the angels that signify these words let the angels that make this happen make it happen for them in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the field blessed is the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle the increase of your cows and the flocks of your sheep blessed is your basket and your kneading trough Blessed shall thou be when you come in. And blessed shall thou be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out in one way, but they shall flee in seven ways. The Lord shall command a blessing upon your storehouse. You shall lend to nations. You will not borrow from anyone. I prophesy unto you, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. I call your husbands. I call your wives. I call your children. I call your prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Whatever limitation is upon your life. Let it be broken now. In the name of Jesus cultural limitation be broken in the name of Jesus territorial limitation be broken in the name of Jesus false mindsets be broken in the name of Jesus I command that you are prosperous in the name of Jesus you will not beg on the streets of Nigeria I forbid you I command jobs to be waiting for you I command ideas to come upon you. For those of you who are going into ministry, I pray that you will not mislead God's people in the name of Jesus. That apostles will come out of you. Prophets will come out of you. Evangelists will come out of you. Teachers of the world will come out of you. Pastors will come out of you. In the name of Jesus. Ladies, I bless your womb no barrenness you will not give birth to abnormal children in the name of jesus hallelujah listen the guys i want to pray for you that spirit that comes upon men listen that makes them wild fathers that spirit that can come upon a young man who is well behaved right now but 10 years later he has become a source of terror to his wife and children let that spirit never come upon you in the name of jesus 
you will be model fathers. I prophesy model fathers in the name of Jesus. Sisters, you'll be model mothers. You will raise children after the fear of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy to the earth. Job said, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. As a servant of the living God, I kneel down upon this earth. I invoke the bread that is upon the earth. I command it to come to your life. I, I kneel down. I invoke it in the name of Jesus. I command bread upon the earth. You will not beg for bread. You will not beg for bread. You will not beg for bread. Hallelujah. That spirit, listen, of untimely death, that a graduate comes to collect his certificate and as he's going back, in the name that is above all names, I command by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every spirit of death upon your life be lifted forever in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every terminal disease, whether it's SS, whatever kind of things you inherited right now, it falls in this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I command that the Godfather himself, the one who can connect men, higher. The one who knows who is who in Abuja, in Lagos, in Jos, in Portacot, my father and my maker. I pray that God will connect you. I call for your destiny helpers. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. For those of you look at me for those of you who are one leg in one leg out with god you are not strong in faith every little thing shakes you you cannot be a general that way i impart strength upon you no backsliding in the name of jesus no backsliding in the name of jesus no backsliding now i want to release something upon you listen to me every time listen every ministry that god calls has certain anointings are you listening to me every ministry that god calls has certain anointings when god called and established this ministry there are certain graces i have seen these graces in my life the ministers have seen it in their life i have preached about it Many people laughed at me when I was saying it. Hallelujah. There is a compelling power. I call it an akazo. My God, I pray that you make your people believe this. There is an anointing for wealth and prosperity. Hear me. No, this one will come with an impartation. There is an anointing for faith. God gave me the spirit of faith. In the name that is above if I be a servant of God at the wind of the spirit right now let it blow 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 the gift of faith the presence of God Anakazo, the compelling power it will compel in Nigeria it will compel in South Africa, in UK, everywhere. But take it, 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 take Abaka boko tosia, brateke bode kobosia.
the favor anointing the favor anointing that came upon esther the favor anointing in the name that uh, the name of the lord jesus i command right now you need favor in nigeria you need favor in nigeria lift your hands for now yes students my father and my god let a mantle of favor receive it receive it receive it favor i invoke it from the realm of the spirit from the realm of the spirit i separate you from evil i separate you from accidents i separate you from fire disaster in the name of jesus i separate you from the activities of terrorists in the name of jesus thou shall not fear go and prosper in business go and prosper in business go and prosper on your job go and prosper in ministry go and prosper in the name of jesus hallelujah god is sending many of us listen we have spoke about we've spoken about kingdom advancement some of you are going into family life some of you into the media some of you into ministry some of you into education wherever you are you are an ambassador you are an ambassador you represent the heavens you represent the heavens my god bless you the god of jacob bless you the one who you honored while on campus may he honor you in the name of the lord jesus go and be a light some of you will go outside this nation i command doors of nations to be open for you in the name of the lord jesus for those of you who are still confused listen about your purpose and what god has called you to do between now and the next 14 days i prophesy that by divine encounters let there be supernatural clarity in the name of jesus none of you will make mistakes in your life not with your job or your ministry or marriage or any of such things in the name of the lord jesus i'm hearing the sound of thunder i know this is not physical i'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do i see this it's like the sound of thunder what I hear in my spirit. hallelujah please pay attention the meeting is on i'm seeing ministering spirits it's a class of angels i'm seeing them walk inside and outside just let me do what is happening ministering spirits there are not many times i see these kinds of angels i'm seeing them walking inside and outside ministering spirits they are angels that impart strange levels of graces ah, ah, yeah. Say na na 
They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs. As they touch you, they break those chains. Nah. They are touching you on behalf of families. Touching you on behalf of families. direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction Direction, direction, direction for where to settle down. Geographic location, direction is coming by the Holy Ghost. Direction. Somebody is praying and say, Lord, show me. The Lord is saying, I am showing you. It's coming upon your spirit. I'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah i'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing
Sit down if you can. Those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3 16. I just want to. The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as is happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me, release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. And as it's happening to you, it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family God wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world 
for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ hallelujah so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for God so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called Jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ and then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son 
you laid aside your majesty you gave up everything for me you suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one. Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 no, no. i can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know I have the power to free he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words I was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? 
It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They're all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere. For, they can sit around. And I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself and then someone comes and while I'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is, I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you, but they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First, stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away. In exchange. The Bible says he was rich. But he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion. But he laid it aside. I hope you know. That they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33 year old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen, 
if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and I invite someone and while you are about to drive him, I say, no, 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 that's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest, he also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him. Let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read down what? I am he that was dead. But now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth. Access to dominion. Access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected. Watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking. And doing all of the things he did. Man would not be able to partake of it. Because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health 
and all of this because you are a just God your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the Bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess of, of, of justice begins to speak I will not fight it but remember that I not only paid the price I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from Philippians chapter 2 the Bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the Bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know I know that I paid the price for you but I want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love I took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in Christ every man's iniquity every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ Paul saw this in Galatians 2 20 and he said I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless he said I live yet not I but Christ is an exchange he died for me now I live in him in other words the day Jesus Christ dies there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him so my life is no longer something I get outside of him my life is an overflow of what I have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything I derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would I be found leaning on my own strength because the moment I lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and I abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that I have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what Christ did on the cross but not just what Christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh I know what he did no let's continue John 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what Jesus did that's not where I'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe Jesus is a prophet it never gives life 
you can believe Jesus is a healer. He doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it. We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have, a, um, what do we call it, uh, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believes that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external impute for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become health. 
that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i i'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe, God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please listen. To open you up to the operation of that life. So that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. 
what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like men men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God speaking according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left, but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if Sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. 
and by warfare they mean a consistent never ending contention both are wrong are we together this is prophecy but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do but I have a role to play nobody gets saved just because Jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh-huh the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when i'm tithing i'm not acting under the law i'm not trying to do something i am responding there is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my think god's life and all its content is away the life of god that can become any and everything any and everything christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done 
there still remains a rest and then he says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life but it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it at a response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. A Jimmy, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this. His response. Now, his standing up is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god look for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 
32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am hallelujah if the father did not give jesus it's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said i'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws a and say oh guy you know we are nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter i'm a military man this is my wife i paid the price for six months to get a yes from her she's in that gutter i don't know the consequence of my action if you think i'm going to forgive you listen if he took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then I assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night <laughs> hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say Lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally. 
that devil of fiber came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed satan is a deceiver he comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer i want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Second baradabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabad
respond respond and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak i put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not god will not just get up and act listen it was god that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died. For God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming.
Hallelujah. All of you in front, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to Jesus Christ. Please, no smiling and pitching one another. This is a serious issue. Please, pray. Open your mouth by yourself and say, Lord, I, I come to you genuinely. The Lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them. You wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you. Please, friend, be careful. Don't stand against anybody's salvation this night. Make your way to the front, please, and join them. I'm seeing three ladies outside that the Lord is calling. One of you, your friend was trying to stop you. The devil is a liar. Please make your way to the front. And then there are two others God is speaking to. Join them quickly before we start praying. Those of you in front here, talk to your maker. No man condemns you. The blood declares. Mercy said no. Help me. I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not gonna let you sleep away. You don't have to be No man condemns you. The mercy. The mercy. at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what Jesus did. Oh, receive these souls. Koinonia, present these souls as trophies of victory. Trophies of victory. This is the sacrifice. The rewards of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty clothes in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast 
so you join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on Till my answer comes, I won't give up, Lord, I won't give up, I'll keep pressing on, until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers. Next time, maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now, we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards. Leave her, John. Leave her. Whatever she wants to do, just let her do. hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i'll begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life <laughs> hallelujah now please begin to pass your requests very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness i tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why i'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. 
Sitting on the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from Ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara state and Ekiti state and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying eh, Jimmy. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife Ah, when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures 
I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Keturah. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees. And we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I, was, I don't know if I was sharing with them. I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands. And we got to the place. We'll show you the video. And we snapped. And I said, I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years, alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around here. I just saw a church. And people, is you can be 190 and not be able to talk, but you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families 
altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and he said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand lift the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted sheba babakata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it back at is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now 
is changing right now is changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Father we turn go ahead and pray Lord my request is turned into a testimony I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place in the name of jesus we command the foundations of the earth we command the firmaments we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of god's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of jesus mighty and everlasting god standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus and end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. 
and, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees release to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shekete Kappa, Sheke Rosata. The kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction I want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of Jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story I went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me 
I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person and I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a man to the Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it. I pray that honor that brings receptivity, receive it right now. Oh, come on, your amen is not loud enough. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land. You know what a delightsome land is? Well desired. In other words, at any point you are seen, you are invited. I don't know who has disqualified you, but I pray for you. They may use your background. They may use whatever. Let grace qualify you tonight. Let grace qualify you tonight. Koinonia, I pray for you. Honor that you have never seen in your life. From even people who can give birth to you, begin to receive it. Strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this is what I'm, there is an anointing for what I'm telling you. Whatever you start, I don't care what it is. Whether it is relationship or whatever. And it ended but not by God. We put life back to it right now. I say it again. Whatever you started. That ended but not by God. By a manipulation of darkness. It jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus. hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos, kete branda kata pa kotos koto pre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.